In this session, we are going to take a deep dive on date functions. So most of your data will contain some dates, right? You can have, a, you know, if you're dealing with say products, you can have order dates, shipping dates, stuff like that. And it kind of becomes very critical when you start querying these and start applying some calculations. For example, if you want to know what is the difference of days between whatever is today's date versus some column date in, in a table. Say, how much days have been passed since the order was shipped? Typically how you would do is get today's date, look at the column value, whatever is the date value for shipped and you take a difference. So SQL Server allows us to do all these things using some inbuilt functions. Right. If you want to get today's date, there is a function. If you want to add two dates, there is a function. If you want to uh, find the difference of just days between two dates, there is a function. Similarly, if you want to find a difference between uh, two dates and just give me the month, how much months have passed between the two um, uh, dates, there is a function. So there are a lot of functions. And actually, you can even use a combination of these lot of functions to create something very complex. So let's start with something very basic. And then what we'll do is we'll start writing some queries against some table. So the way you can do that is say select get date, right? And if you run a query, you basically get today's date that is July 11th, 2015, right? So this is the very simplest form of date manipulation. Get date will just give you the current date. Okay. Now, if you want to get, if you want to say subtract two days from this, right? You can say get date and just say minus two, and it'll kind of show you it's July 9th, 2015. Okay. So just basic subtraction. Many times you don't really want this entire date. Right, you just want to know the date parts, the month part, or the year part, and that's very critical, right? You might find what else. So, if you get a query like, okay, give me the average, not even average, give me the number of years that a person has been with the company. So, what do you do? You look at the higher date, you look at today's date, and you subtract both of them, and then basically get the number of years. One of the ways of doing that is, okay, give me the number of days and one year is 365 days and you do the math. But SQL Server provides us some inbuilt functions to do these things. So let's have a look. It's typically called as the date part. So it goes something like this, select date part. And then basically you say, I want the year for today. So whatever is today's date, I just want the, the year section of it. So this will give me 2015. And again, you can always give aliases, you know, um, like we discussed before. So this column will be called as year number. And similarly, you can do something like this for months. It's called MM. And you can refer to the MSDN documentation to get all these syntaxes. But when you start a bracket, it generally gives you a hint as to what will be returned and what is the expected parameters. So this will give you seven since today is July. And by now you must have got an idea of how this works. So for day, what you do is you use the term DD and today is the 11th day, okay? So this is the date part. Now, we looked at one of the ways in which we just added two days to this, right? But it gave you the, the entire string and then you can manipulate the dates. But there are some inbuilt functions which will allow you to do this. And that's precisely called as date add. So what data does is, you know, it allows you to add four days or five months or three years, depending upon, you know, how you want to deal with it to any date. So we can, we can say something like select date add, date add is a function. And as soon as you open the bracket, it kind of gives you a hint as to what interval you want, what's the increment and the expression. So, you, so let me say that I want to add four days, so that's why I use the day um, parameter 
to current day. So today is July 11th and I add four days you will get July 15th right and and again you can use the same concept to put any custom date this can be a column something like that so um, say July 4 2015 should give you July 8 2015 right okay and you can extend the same concept to um, you know month so you say add four months to whatever today is so you get November um, and then you can also use the same concept to add four years to the current date so you get 2019 so you get the idea it's basically just playing around with the parameters and then you know working this thing out now dates are really really powerful once you know at least some of the basic functions because most of our analysis and stuff is going to require dates and it's really critical when we combine aggregation with dates and you know give me the average um, turnover rate or something for a quarter right so here so many things are involved when you say a quarter then definitely dates are involved right and then you'd find averages and stuff like that so you might have situations where you can say okay for the last three months give me um, say say the number of hours worked but don't count Saturdays and Sundays right so you can always use intelligent queries to find the day part and if the day part is six or seven Saturday or Sunday then you avoid them and so on and so forth but th these things just give you a basic idea all right let's look at a table so let's look at uh, let's try to find some table which might have a date and then you know at least try to run one query against it so um, let's see work order should have a date probably yeah it has a uh, date time date time oh it has three dates cool so let me run let me just show you some sample data from this table so that we can play around with it let's call what work order something work order okay okay um let's say select top 10 star from this Okay, I need to make sure I'm connecting to the right database. Okay, so it has a work order ID, a product ID. It has a start date, end date, due date, right? Um, let's try to play around with this. Okay, let's say I want the work, or work order ID. So that's pretty simple. We, we don't need to do any manipulation here. I need the product ID again very simple I need the <clears throat> start date and end date and what I need is the difference between those two things so I'm going to use the date diff function and I'm going to say difference of days between the start date and the end date okay and from this table so I just want to show you how to you know utilize this when you're querying against a table and then it gives you that it, it's it's 10 days so it's 7 4 and 7 14 so set so 10 days right so you know think about it this way the table that I showed you basically had stuff like due date start date and end date and you could actually say if due date minus the difference between these two is greater than zero then it's under schedule or it's so you know things like that you can you you can play with this infinitely once you know the different functions and how to use them okay let's try to do something tricky now let's okay let's say I want to get the first day of this month okay so the way you can do is let's see so this month is um, the 11th of July. So one of the ways that we can get the first day is, let's do one thing. Let's see, uh, let's get the date part of this one. So date part, day, and get date, right? So this is 11, so what I need to do is I need to get today's date and I need to subtract it with the previous day right that will give me answer as one 
So what I'm going to do over here is, this is the previous day. So this should give me my previous day, hopefully. Yes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the date add function and I need to subtract. So I'm using this and say from today. So this will give me the first day of this month. So again, you see that there are so many functions involved here, date part, get date, so on and so forth. Now, again, once you know these different functions, you can really play around with different combinations and get a feel of it. So these are the various things that you can do with dates. Of course, there are lots of other functions also provided, but you know, to, to get started with, these are the basic things you would require in order to run some queries.